Hey everyone, Majorite Brad here. Pokemon Blue with only version exclusives was a fun team run. Let's follow that up with another team run. Today's the day that we figure out would I be able to beat Pokemon Gold with a team of only normal types? I guess I don't really need to explain what a normal type Pokemon is, but Gen 2 has a lot of them. Good ones, too. The biggest problem we're going to have is, of course, that we don't get the same type attack bonus on any super effective moves, since normal type just isn't super effective against anything. We can use other types of moves, but we won't be as good with them unless we're a dual type, and we don't really have many options in that department. Like always, I'm writing the script as I go through with the challenge, so all this part is being written before I've started. Everyone comment down below and guess if I can win or not. Obviously, I can win this. I'm just looking forward to playing the run and seeing how low of a level I'll win at. Let's explain the rules. In combat, I can only use normal type Pokemon. I'll need other Pokemon to use HMs, but I won't be allowed to use any of those Pokemon in battle. No glitches or exploits, no items in battle, only Pokeballs, held items, and items outside of combat are allowed. Also, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell for more. Let's do this. I guess there's no need for the randomizer on this one, since we can just catch our first two normal types on the first route of the game anyway. Right away, I catch Sentret and Hoot Hoot. Now this took a little while since you can only catch Sentret during the morning or evening and Hoot Hoot at night, but that's alright. I used the extra time to grind Sentret up just a little bit. Sentret's going to become Furret, it's kind of like a Gen 2 Raticate. Not crazy strong or anything, but it's a decent normal type Pokemon that learns a few cool moves and is easy to train. Hoot Hoot is going to become Noctowl, and it's kind of a dud in this game, since it's a special attack Pokemon, and the only moves it can learn in this game that uses its special attack are Dream Eater and Thief. Really, we just have it because it's part flying type. I guess I could catch Pidgey and then use Pidgeot instead for a better Pokemon, but when have I ever made things easy on myself? I feel like using Noctowl, so that's who I'm going to use. <laughs> As soon as we finally had Hoot Hoot, I went ahead and cleared out Bellsprout Tower to level it up. Peck is going to be the strongest flying move we have until we beat the Fighting Gym and get the HM for Fly. So this is the best we've got for ages. Let's hope it's enough. The Flying Gym should be easy, right? Okay, well on the first try, Hoot Hoot was level 11 and Sentret was level 9. Obviously, all we can do is hit each other with our strongest moves. It's early game, so move choice is limited. We were one hit away from winning. I bet one level would have made us win that fight. Yep, literally one level later and we win pretty easily, actually. Mind you, we did get crit less, but we also crit them less. In early game, one or two levels can really mean a lot. With that done, we just need to head south through Union Cave to get to the Bug Gym. Now, the Bug Gym itself probably won't be too hard since we have a flying type, and that can probably handle it, but our rival after might be kind of annoying with his ghost type. That said, we can hit it, and it's early enough in the game that I doubt it can take much of a hit. We might have smooth sailing until the normal gym. Hey, you want to know what's crazy about both this run and how long I've been doing YouTube? I first did a normal type only run of this game 12 years ago on this very YouTube channel, and I made a whole Let's Play out of it. Now, mind you, I was only 19 years old back then, and the Let's Play is probably unwatchably bad by today's standards. I wouldn't know, I haven't gone back and rewatched it for fear of cringing myself straight into a coma. But in case you were wondering, yes, I have indeed been doing Pokemon challenges since the dawn of time. <laughs> If you want to get really technical with it, I remember with Pokemon Stadium 1, when I was a kid, back before Generation 2 of Pokemon had even come out, I was trying to play solo runs with my starter, uh, with the Pokemon Tower in Pokemon Stadium, while using my, I guess it would have been Pokemon Blue and Pokemon Yellow that I would have been doing it with. And that's, that's crazy to think, actually. I've been doing Pokemon challenges in some fashion or another since I was, like, 9 or 10. <laughs> anyway, let's go beat that Bug Gym. The Bug Gym was pretty easy, as expected. Yeah, Peck is a really weak move, but Bugsy is only really good Pokemon as Scyther, and it was using Quick Attack, since Fury Cutter could be resisted. Thanks to that, we won real easy. Next is our rival, and this one took a few tries thanks to Zubat confusing us. Now, Hoot Hoot is nearly level 20, and Sentret is still level 10, so our team isn't really any stronger than his, but really, it's his smokescreen that messes us up badly. On this run, though, Hoot Hoot mostly did the fight by himself, with a little bit of help from Sentret. I really do need to grind them up to evolve soon, though. 
Hey, guess what? We can go catch our next Pokemon now, Stantler. It took forever to find this thing and five Great Balls while it was asleep with red health to catch it, but we finally got one. I love the design of this Pokemon. I don't think I've ever actually used one before, though. I would argue that it's got better stats than Furret or Noctowl, although it can't learn too crazy of moves. I could give it the Headbutt TM, but it's only got five more power points than Stomp, so I may as well use Headbutt on Furret instead. I think I'm actually gonna go teach Stantler Flash? Yeah, it can learn that for some reason. I, I guess because it can hypnotize with his antlers or whatever. It's a pretty tanky Pokemon. It could be useful to send in to ruin the accuracy of something that we otherwise couldn't take down. Oh, actually, that could be super useful for keeping Miltank from using Rollout in the normal gym. Oh, this timing is perfect then. Both Hoot Hoot and Sentret just evolved, so I think I'll grind Stantler up a little bit and then try the normal gym. All right, time for the normal gym. Right away for Clefairy, I just spam Peck with Knocked Owl and got pretty lucky because she only hit us with Double Slap once. I, I mean, the Double Slap hit multiple times, but she only used it and hit once. You know what I mean by that. Second is Miltank, the real threat. She started her rollout right away, but we shut it down pretty fast by hitting Flash a few times. Stantler still went down quickly, but we got three Flashes in, so that's all right. I sent in Noctowl, but Miltank was smart and used a tract right away. Our pecs were hardly doing anything, so we didn't last long. Man, she just wasn't missing. Last is Furret, so I just kept going for Headbutt, but quickly she started using Milk Drink to massively outheal us, so I was worried. I figured we were doomed as I kept headbutting and she kept healing, and she was getting the occasional hit in to nearly take us out, when suddenly she just stopped using Milk Drink. So we won. Well, she gave up on that fight. With that incredibly close fight done, we get access to two new Pokemon, Tauros and Miltank. These are both fantastic Pokemon. Both are fast, Tauros hits real hard, and Miltank is super tanky. Plus, it has Milk Drink, so we have a healing move on the team. They can both learn a ton of TM moves that frankly make no sense, like Blizzard and Thunder, so we could get some use out of that, I suppose. In fact, I should go buy the TMs for Thunder Punch right away, since Miltank can learn that for some reason. Hey, Ghost Gym should be easy, right? I mean, it's not like they can hit us with Shadow Ball. Nah, it turns out it's really hard, actually. See, only Miltank and Noctowl can hit them right now, and neither of them do much damage. They can't use Shadow Ball, but instead what they do is Hypnosis all the time. Getting put to sleep is pretty much a death sentence because of them using Dream Eater to heal back up, so I'll have to change something. Maybe I'll give Dig to Furret. Let's see if that does the trick. Yeah, that did the trick. I'm really thankful it did too, because most of our team can learn Earthquake, but this is the only one who can learn Dig. Abilities weren't a thing until Gen 3, so Dig hits his entire team and makes pretty short work of them. That means we're on the road, but the next couple of fights are gonna be brutal. There's the Fighting Gym in a run where we're using normal types, and then there's the Steel Gym in a run where our special attack of our entire team sucks. So we can learn stuff like Surf or Fire Punch to help, but none of our team is any good with those moves. I probably will have to use Fire Punch though. I don't really see us just brute forcing the fight with what we have. Let's do the Fighting Gym first, just to see how it goes. So first is Primeape, and although it's not that tough, he did manage to take out most of Noctowl's health with Karate Chop before we could take it down. Because of that, Poliwrath was able to quickly finish it off, so I had to use Miltank instead. Right away we crit a stomp that caused a flinch, then got another stomp in to really damage him before we got one shot. Then I sent in for it to hit a headbutt, got another flinch, then finished him off for the win. Man, that was lucky. I know Dynamic Punch misses a lot, so we didn't need all of those flinches, but... Ooh, they might have saved us. Next is the Steel Gym, and this one is just brutal. The Magnemites are both one-shots with Dig, it's the Steelix that's the real problem. It's not that it's completely impossible to take down, but we do almost no damage. Fire Punch is super effective, but our special attack is almost nothing. And Dig is super effective, but Steelix has crazy defense, so we are hardly doing anything with any of our moves. What we need is to hit Flash so that Iron Tail misses more, but we need a lot of misses before we could win. This was the luckiest attempt I had, and I think I was one hit away from winning. I'm gonna grind up a little bit, and then come back. 
Okay, after catching some of the lower level members of the team up to near the early 20s, and getting a few levels on Furt and Miltank, we're back. This time, not only do I get a flash in to lower accuracy, but we also hit Tail Whip twice with Tauros. The battle is still pretty difficult, and it's very easy to faint due to bad luck with Iron Tail, especially if they drop your defense. But this strategy did manage to get us a win. So I guess we're on the move again. I spent most of the rocket hideout just leveling up Tauros because it feels like it's on the verge of becoming strong enough to start sweeping trainer Pokemon with strength. I figure that it's probably going to be strong enough to take out the ice gym on its own, but I really think that we could have smooth sailing until the dragon gym. That's going to be a mess though, just because they're strong and have thunder wave. We have a few Pokemon who can learn ice punch, but none of them are very good with it. So some Pokemon would really be doing more damage with normal moves anyway. Yup, as expected, super easy. Haven't we only ever fainted in the ice gym in like two or three gold runs? I feel like this gym being difficult is incredibly rare. It's always so weird when there's a gym that's noticeably easier than the ones that came before it. Like the multiple gyms before it. I guess Gen 5's ice gym is kind of like that too though, isn't it? That places us in the radio tower, and that means that we're only one major fight away from getting our sixth Pokemon for the team. I don't want to say for sure that it'll be our last Pokemon, because I have one in mind that I'm probably going to pick up in Kanto. I just don't know who I'm replacing yet. I can't really see the next rival fight being a serious issue since he doesn't have any strong fighting moves, so I figure this place should be a breeze. Well, the rival fight was easy, but I think this really highlights just how bad the special attack of our team is. It seems like the elemental punches are only really worth using if the opponent both is weak to it and has terrible special defense, because otherwise just hitting a normal move that's decent usually does more damage. And although I guess the punches still have the added benefit of status afflictions, it doesn't always kick in. Well, whatever. We're actually just about to go get a Pokemon with noticeably better special attack than the rest of our team. It's not awesome special attack, but it's decent. I'm sure you guys saw this one coming. I caught a Teddy Ursa. I mean, how could I not, right? You saw how good this thing was in my Teddy Ursa solo run. And you saw how incredible it was when it evolves in the Gold Exclusives run. It's easily one of the best normal types in the game. I'd be crazy to pass this thing up. Now, I'm going to teach it Ice Punch and evolve it so that we can get ready for the Dragon Gym. But Ursaring usually ends up being better with Slash than Elemental Punches most of the time. So the winning move might be to throw our whole team at him and see what happens. Ice Punch might be more useful later against Lance, where he's got Pokemon who are double weak to ice. I'll get some grinding in and then give it a try. Time for the Dragon Gym. My goal was to brute force down the Dragonairs with Tauros and then throw the rest of the team at Kingdra and eventually win. Now Tauros wasn't able to one-shot the Dragonairs, so we did get paralyzed and only managed to take down the first two of them, but that's alright. Furt took out the third one, although he got paralyzed and lost most of his health trying. What really shocked me was that I thought I'd throw my whole team at Kingdra, but we ended up beating it pretty easily with Miltank alone. If she just spammed Surf, then we would have fainted very early. But she didn't, so we won. We're on the road to the end of the game. All we have is a normally easy rival fight before the Elite Four, but some of our team is still in their early level 20s. What's the starting level for the Gen 4 Elite Four? 40? I think Lance's Pokemon go up to like 55? Yeah, I can't see us getting very far without our team at least in the level 30s. That can wait until after the rival fight though. Well, it's not going to be waiting for long because this fight was a breeze, and that's with us not even having our full team thanks to needing HM Pokemon to get here. I guess he hurt Furret pretty badly, but that's alright, we didn't faint at all. Now that we're at the Elite Four, let's take a look at our team. Okay, well, some of our members are pretty good, and I wouldn't say that any of our Pokemon are straight up bad, but some are really underleveled, so we had to get them to level 30 as a minimum. I'm sure 30 is still too low, but we have a whole team, so who knows. There isn't really a whole lot I want to change about their movesets, considering most of the type coverage that I could get are special moves, and none of our team is particularly good with those. I did get the TM for Earthquake, though, since half of our team can learn it. I taught it to Tauros, I figured it could make the best use of the coverage. Make your final guesses on if we can win this or not. Let's do this. First is Psychic Trainer Will. It basically goes exactly how I thought it would. 
The Zatu at the start does some crazy damage with Psychic, but is a little frail, and the Jinx right after is very frail and takes a ton of damage, but as soon as we get to the tankier Pokemon like Slowbro, we really fall apart. We've got no answer for it because our Thunder Punches hardly do anything, and just brute forcing it with normal moves doesn't do much either, especially once he starts building his defense with Curse. Well, I knew I was way too low of a level anyway. Let's catch the team up a little bit and then try some more. Alright, a few tries later. The first Zatu just confuses us, but on a good run like this one, we just hit Strength twice to take it out, and then switch as Jinx comes out. Ursaring had a lucky start as Jinx missed Lovely Kiss, and then went for Double Slap to hardly hurt us instead, so we got two scratches in for great damage. But then we finally got put to sleep. After missing a double slap, she decided to be smart and just use Psychic twice to easily knock us out, so I had to send in Tauros to take her down. Not a great start. Executor managed to Leech Seed us and land a Psychic for huge damage, but we took it out. I don't like how hurt Tauros is, though. For Slowbro, I just keep brute forcing it with Strength, but Leech Seed heals him a bit, and he hits Psychic, so I just switched to Miltank to spam Stomp. We had to switch to Thunder Punch, though, because he was spamming Curse to buff his defense. We nearly went down to Psychic before we took him out. Last is his final Zatu, and right away he confuses Furret, and we hit ourselves. Really not a good sign. It looks like we have a speed tie though, because at the start of the next round, we hit ourselves BEFORE he dropped us to one health with Psychic. Then he quick attacked to take us out. Well, that was useless. Out to Noctowl, and for the first time in recorded history, a Zatu used Future Sight while I was in the air and timed it properly. So I got knocked out by it when I landed. That was actually brilliant. The AI never does that. I can't even be mad. I sent in our damaged mill tank as he used a max potion, and we landed a hit for some damage but went down to Psychic. All we have left is our underleveled Stantler. We got hit by Psychic, lost most of our health, then landed a stomp that finished him off. That was our last Pokemon and our last 35 points of health. What an incredibly close fight! Second is Poison Trainer Koga. Now this one was really simple by contrast. Most of his Pokemon like to use little tricks and abilities, whereas most of my Pokemon just hit really hard. The only Pokemon on his team that put us in any real danger was Crobat at the end, and all it did was get Ursaring to half health. We still had a full team as backup just in case. Third is the Fighting Trainer Bruno. This one is mostly an easy fight thanks to his Hitmontop going down to an Earthquake while he's underground, and both Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee having terrible defense. Mind you, Hitmonlee got very lucky with his Swagger, although it's hilarious seeing him try to high jump kick while we're in the air. We did manage to use Fly once, but we missed, so it didn't matter. But the reason why we can't win this fight seems to just be that Machamp one-shots literally the entire team with Cross Chop. Even when I use Flash, he still hits us nearly every time. And he's got Vital Throw, so he can't actually have his accuracy lowered to the point that he's useless. Vital Throw doesn't miss. So I think I just have to try a handful more times and I might be able to get this to work. Alright, never mind, I'm gonna have to level up more for sure. It's alright. That's what rare candies are made for. But yeah, as you can see, even if we have decent cross chop luck, he has a max potion and he always uses it because nothing can hit him hard enough to actually reliably get him past the point where he'd heal. I guess we're quite a bit lower level than him though. Let's get our team up to level 40. The team is now level 40 and this one was so agonizing that you have to see it. Everything is consistent leading up to Machamp at this point, so this is where we're starting. So on this run, we finally lucked out with a cross chop missing after flash. But our second flash misses, so we only got one in. Whatever, that's how it usually goes. Ursaring got one shot before it could hit Machamp, so I sent in Mill Tank pretty quick. It started lucky with a critical stomp messing him up so bad and he kept missing cross chops. But then he used a max potion to heal. The thing is, he failed every move, so we took him out. You'd think that means we win, right? I mean, all he has left is one Onyx, and we have three Pokemon. It can't be that hard, right? Well, the entire rest of the fight is me slowly, one by one, getting taken down by this invincible Onyx. The only super effective move that we have on any of our Pokemon who hasn't fainted is Dig, but we can't use that because Onyx has Earthquake, and it'll catch us while we're underground. 
By the time that Noctowl was out and we finally had Onyx and Red Health, we just went down to Rock Slides. It took more than half of the fight just to lose to that Onyx. It was so close though. I am absolutely convinced that I can beat this if I just do some slight strategy changes. Give me a little while to figure this out, I can make it work. Okay, so I kept trying more, this time beating Hitmonchan with Noctowl so that Onyx would come out before Machamp. This is important because it means that Ursaring can take Onyx down very easily early with Ice Punch, so that we don't have the nightmare of having to deal with it after Ursaring's fainted. The overall strategy for taking down Machamp is the same though. Use Flash as much as we can, hope Cross Chop misses a lot, and then throw the entire team at him for Brute Force. This time though, it works pretty well with us having a few members of the team left by the time he finally goes down. Fourth is Dark Trainer Karen. This was a pretty easy one though, where we had some solid answers for her whole team. A lot of them just can't really handle a strong physical attacker, and if there's anything that we do have, it's strong physical attackers. The only time one of our Pokémon actually fainted was from Houndoom at the end, and we were never in any actual danger of losing the whole fight. Finally, Pokémon Champion Lance. First is Water Onyx, so Thunder Punch is definitely the way to go, although it does less than you'd hope. Thankfully, on the first try we paralyzed him, he made it rain, but then he was fully paralyzed so we took him out without getting hurt. Awesome start. For the first Dragonite, we used Ursaring. Ice Punch did pretty solid damage so we could get a two shot, but we lost most of our health to Hyper Beam in the process. The next Dragonite took us out right away, so with no ice moves left, I just sent in Miltank to stomp it. We weren't doing a ton though. We got lucky with a missing blizzard a few times, but we got paralyzed eventually. We took him out after his third missed blizzard, so that was pretty funny, but I wouldn't say that we're in good shape. I sent in Tauros to deal with Aerodactyl, and we literally just got outsped in one shot by Hyper Beam. I see how this is gonna go. I ended up having to throw both Miltank and Furt at it to land as many hits as I could before he destroyed us. Tauros, Miltank, and Furt all went down. It wasn't until Stantler that I could finish it. Next is Charizard, who nearly one-shot Stantler, so all we got in was a Stomp. And last is Noctowl, who went down very quickly. Ouch. Alright, uh, five more levels on the team and let's keep trying. Okay, a few tries later. Water Onyx does hit us with Surf for solid damage thanks to the rain, but we still take it out at about the same speed as before. And for the first Dragonite, we go for a two-shot with Ice Punch like last time. He actually failed Thunder Wave, then hit a Hyper Beam, so we didn't get paralyzed before taking him down. The second Dragonite takes us down with a Hyper Beam though, so I had to send in Tauros to brute force it with strength. We almost took it out without getting hit, but ended up getting paralyzed. Losing two turns in a row, he missed a Hyper Beam, then we took him out. Aerodactyl is next, so I tanked Hyper Beam, hardly survived, hit two strengths that did way more damage than I was expecting, then sent in Stantler to finish it off while he was still recharging his Hyper Beams. We got Hyper Beamed, but we did at least hold on. Second from last is Charizard, who took out Stantler quickly, but ended up going down to Furret of all things because we got a flinch to score an extra hit. Last is his Dragonite, so I started with Furret to soften him up, and it worked great as the first headbutt crit. We went down, but sent in Noctowl to keep whittling away at him. Reflect, Fly, and his own confusion from Outrage were a great combo. I figured this might take a while, when a critical Fly took him out early! What a win! With that victory, we get into the Hall of Fame and win the run, but you know it's not over yet. Gen 2 has all of Kanto in the postgame, including 8 gym battles and a secret final fight with Red. 7 of those 8 gym battles are super easy since they're weaker than the Elite Four, so we're gonna go ahead and skip to the next real challenge, Blue. Oh, but there's actually a Pokémon for sure worth picking up, and I think most of you can already guess, Snorlax. Usually I catch him on gold team runs so that I can get the extra set of leftovers, but we're just gonna straight abuse him this time. Why not, right? It's easily one of the best normal types in the entire game. This means we have two sets of leftovers total, so I'm feeling confident. Right away Pidgeot is out, but it just doesn't stand a chance against our fresh Snorlax that I pretty much just caught. He did mirror move a body slam on us and I was paranoid I'd get paralyzed, but we're okay, we took him out. 
And in fairness, we had rest, so it might not have been a crisis. Alakazam is hardly able to hurt us and went down in one body slam, and next is Rhydon, so I sent an Ursaring to take it out in a few ice punches. We actually didn't even get hurt because we froze him right away. For Water Onyx, I decided that the Thunder Punch wasn't really awesome last time, so I just used Snorlax with Body Slam. He nearly went down to a Hyper Beam early on, but we managed to make him faint while he was recharging. The moment Executor came out, I used Rest to fully heal back up. His Solar Beam did solid damage to us, but we have Snore, so we're not totally defenseless while we sleep. It may not do much damage, but it's better than nothing. He just kept using Solar Beam, really not that efficient of a move. It was a long fight because he healed back up with a full restore, but of course his Executor could never take down my Snorlax. At least without Leech Seed, and I doubt he has it or he'd have used it. I mean, I think he'd have used it at least. I know that I would have if I was in his shoes. Leech Seed on Snorlax is incredible. Last is Arcanine, but once again, we can use Rest, Snore, and Body Slam when we're awake. We have to be extra careful in this fight because he is hitting us extra hard, but we pretty much did the vast majority of this fight on a single Snorlax that I caught less than an hour before the fight. I feel so much better with this thing on the team. With that done, we're on our way to the red fight. Now, we're obviously not ready yet because Red's team is level 73 to 81, and most of our team is, like, in the level 40s? So I'm gonna have to level them up. I decided I'd rare candy them all the way up to level 60, so it's a lot lower than Red's team. I think we do stand a chance, though. It is quite a bit lower than his team, but his team kind of has bad stats considering how high their level is, so... Mm, we'll see. I actually kind of feel good about this. So right away we use our Tauros that's 21 levels lower than his Pikachu to one-shot him with Earthquake. It always surprises me just how bad Red's Pikachu is in this game. That is shocking. Second is Espeon, and our first strength did awesome damage, but then he used Reflect. Thanks to that, he got to hit us with a Psychic that nearly one-shot us before we took him out. Good thing Tauros has leftovers to heal with a little bit. Out to Ursaring as his Snorlax comes out so that I can spam Slash, and right away, a critical Slash took out about half of his health. That was more than I thought it would. Unfortunately, we got a Paralyze on the first Body Slam, so we were an easy two-shot. Out to Tauros, and we got a Strength in before going down. It was looking rough, but our Snorlax, that's literally 15 levels lower than his, outsped him and took him out. Red is just... An awful trainer, apparently. I don't know how else my pretty much freshly caught Snorlax that's 15 levels lower than his is actually faster. This is before natures were a thing, too, so it's not like he's got a bad speed nature and I've got a good speed nature. His, his Snorlax just kind of sucks. <laughs> Next is Venusaur, who we instantly put to sleep and start using Fly Against. The first one crit for really great damage. The second one brought him to a sliver. Then we used Confusion to finish it off. He never woke up. For Blastoise, I sent in Snorlax to slam him down while he made it rain. We not only crit on the first hit, but also paralyzed him. He still hit Surf for honestly incredible damage, but of course we could slam him after to take him down. Last is Charizard, so I kept Snorlax in, knowing that he's our tankiest. It's still raining from the Blastoise fight, so Charizard goes for Wing Attack instead of Flamethrower. It does a lot more damage than I was expecting, but he blows it on round two by going for a super weak fire spin. It crit and still did almost nothing. He was doomed. Our rollout built up fast, we crit, and he went down giving us the win. I have to say, these type exclusive runs are really fun. Yeah, we get to use some super strong Pokemon, but that's part of the fun of the run, using Pokemon that we don't normally use. I hope you guys like that run. The next Pokemon challenge should be up next Saturday, like usual, with Pokemon Emerald with only one Relicanth. R Relicanth? I, I think I'm saying that right. I've never, I've never said that one out loud before. A Pokemon so rare in Emerald that I've never caught one in my life. So I'm looking forward to trying it out. As always, I'm looking forward to your suggestions in the comments, in the challenge request section of my Discord channel, and on Twitter. Subscribe, ring the bell, stay tuned. All right. Outro time. Oh man, I have so much to do this week. So many plans. So much to do for all of April, really. Um, it is, what day is it when I'm recording this? It is April 4th. 
the day that I am recording this voiceover, although I know that you guys won't be hearing me until probably a week after after this, um, a slightly more than a full week after April 4th, in fact. Mm, a week and three or four days, something like that. I guess it depends on if you're one of the people who follow me on Twitter and get the link early. Ooh, isn't that exciting? Some of you don't even know that I do that, that I just tweet out the video whenever it's done so you can all watch it early for fun. Um, I guess you'll know that if you listen to the outros, though, and my analytics tell me most people don't. <laughs> so it's just a little gift for those of you who uh, who are in the know, those of you who listen. Um, but yeah, I am so packed for, like, all of April, just so much going on around the house and everything, but... Uh, then things should ease up a little bit after that, so I'm very excited to have more time to do more stuff. You know, I was starting to stream Bannerlord a while ago, I want to do more of that. I want to do more um, WWF WrestleMania 2000 on the N64 as Midian. That's been really, really fun. I want to get back to that. Had a lot of demands for that. Oh my god, Wrestling Empire. There's so many things that I need to get back to and that I'm so excited to do but I've really got to get on top of some home stuff and some Pokemon challenge stuff first. And I might even have some Pokemon Let's Play type stuff planned. I got some ideas bouncing around, trust me. I, I have a big page where I plan everything out year by year by year. I have plans that go back 10 years that'll happen one day. <laughs> you know, when I have the, the time and the energy and, and the moment is just right, it'll happen. So I am quite excited to get some of that stuff done for you. But until then, uh, I got a motor and get this video edited and get some more food in me and get walking around. And there is so much to do. So I should get on top of that. Thank you everybody so much for watching. And until next time, have a nice day.